Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with that hot juicy beef. Well, what do we got today? Women beaters, Trump and transgenders. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome and welcome back to all my day oneers. Used to say that at the beginning. If you've ever watched any of the old videos, this is your last chance. I might remove them all, okay? I might take away all the tiger stuff. I might leave it there. Anyway, the mask is coming off. We're planning on doing it tomorrow. Will it happen? Stay tuned. You'll see tomorrow. All right. Well, what's going on? We got wife beaters, woman beaters. Thou shalt not mention the accusations against Dougie. All right, let's check it out. What's going on? I got to tell you, this this campaign is... <laughs> so everything that's said about Donald Trump and his treatment of women and the gender gap in this campaign, this rapper, who I fully admit sold a lot of records, if you've read some of the things he has said about the promotion of domestic violence... No, no, no. What he said, he said, women, he said, he no, said no, if you're no, famous, you can grab them by the... Bakari, I listen oh, to your I'm... entire filibuster. If you could just give me 13 <laughs> seconds. I'll give you 12 because he's so, grab him by the... And, mm -hmm. so, and, and so when you when you think about the things he has said in order to sell those records, and you also consider some of the questions that are swirling around Harris's own husband in this regard, oh my I God. find... Okay, I find, you don't even get 12 seconds. Second. I find... I'm not going to let you go just, into I'm the just, far end of listen, the end. I'm just telling you. Scott, like, you can't go... Okay, hey, hey, listen, hey, hey, I can't hey, hey, represent you in the defamation case. We're going to okay, stop here for a second. All right? Shut it down. Like, you know, like the dude literally wouldn't let him talk. And that's the liberal way. You got an argument? Uh, be quiet. We don't want to hear it. Uh, it's a good argument. Just shut up. Just be quiet. You're a jerk. Name call. Ad hominem. Kamala Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff, slapped me in the face so hard I spun around. I'm disgusted by his fake, perfect spouse persona. Doug Emhoff's ex-girlfriend has spoken exclusively to DailyMail.com, claiming that he slapped her in the face so hard she spun around at a 2012 celebrity event in France. The woman, a successful New York attorney, is remaining anonymous, but decided to speak out after Emhoff, Kamala Harris's husband, denied the claims through a spokesman. Emhoff's accuser, who DailyMail.com is naming only as Jane, initially declined to comment on the record, but Emhoff's denial and his alleged hypocrisy by claiming to be a feminist in media interviews finally became too much for her. What's frightening for a woman that's been on the other end of it is watching this completely fabricated persona being portrayed. He's being held out to be the antithesis of who he actually is. And that is utterly shocking. Yeah, he's redefining masculinity. And there's an image of the woman uh, blocked out. We'll never know who she is. Ooh, I'm sure you could pretty much reverse image search that and find it. Um, unprovoked attack, October 2nd, by reporting accounts from two friends she told immediately after, a third she told in 2018, and documents evidencing her relationship with her friends. Yeah, so the dude's a woman beater. He also is an adulterer who forced the uh, female to have an abortion after he impregnated her. Kamala Harris VP choice Tim Walz had secret fling with daughter of top Chinese communist official during teaching stand in China. Yikes. Tim Walz had a secret fling with the daughter of a high-ranking communist official during his 1989 teaching stand in China. DailyMail.com can exclusively reveal Jenna Wang, 59, claims the VP hopeful showered her with gifts and seduced her at his pokey staff accommodation at number one high school in Foshan, Guangdong province. The lovers could not risk holding hands or showing affection in public because Wang's dad was a high-ranking figure in the Chinese Communist Party who would disown her for fraternizing with a Westerner. Absolutely. They do not like that. Uh, but their romance blossomed behind closed doors as they sipped tea, made love, and listened to George Michael hits. Interesting choice of music. Leading 
the then 24-year-old Wang to dream about marriage and a new life in the United States. No proposal was forthcoming from the future Minnesota governor, however, and the shame of being treated like a prostitute eventually left Wang feeling angry and suicidal, she claims. Yikes, and there's an image of him. Hmm. Interesting allegations. Tim was very passionate and very romantic. I can still remember dancing with him to our favorite song, Careless Whisper. The fact we couldn't touch or kiss in public just made it all the more exciting and intense when we were finally alone. Interesting. We were deeply in love and I wanted to marry him and start a family. When it didn't happen, I felt very unhappy and sad. Tim's behavior was very selfish. Yeah, he had other things in mind. His career. So I guess like it kind of puts to bed the thing. Maybe he's like, you know, plays on both sides. We'll see. I don't know. He's very effeminate. Check this out. What are people saying? BBC sent some people over to America to see what's going on. Americans this year. We gather together some of the people who are so furious about the president's failure to rein in Israel's assaults on Gaza and Lebanon, they're refusing to support his vice president and making some very surprising choices. Can you tell us how you'll vote in November? I'm not just voting for Trump. I am endorsing him and telling my community to vote for him as well. But you've been a Democrat all your life? I'm still a Democrat. Wow. I'm still a Democrat. I'm still actually probably left, more left than most Democrats. So why on earth vote for Donald Trump and encourage others to do it? Because I believe there has to be accountability. Harris is going to continue the, the same exact policies under, under uh, Biden. So Yeah, I mean, she's speaking the truth. And that's a fact. She, Kamala said it. And that's the bottom line. They see through it. At the end of the day, I don't think she has what it takes. All right, well, let's see what these people have to say. What are your feelings, and I, uh, let me start with the women here, about Kamala Harris? She's a woman of color. I'm not putting her down because of that, and I'm not putting her down because she's a woman. I'm not a feminist, so I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, I don't think not she sorry. has the personality. I don't think that she has what it takes to go up against Putin and go up against these other presidents that are built for this. I don't want to be scared because my president is scared. I want my president to feel secure and mm. manly and about it. We brought about it. Gender, right? like, Kamala ain't leaders. about it. She ain't about that life. And people aren't She's lazy, a apparently. In a top leadership role? No, I don't no. think that because most men, they, they love their mothers. They love their wives. So yeah. as a woman, most men, they respect the woman. But she just don't have the qualification or the education to really run America. Boom. And that's a fact. Megyn Kelly drops a polling bomb on Kamala and Democrats. A black vote for Trump is off the chisnerts. There is a poll that was the most accurate poll of 2020 in the presidential election. And they have just dropped a poll of likely voters, uh, margin of error 2%. In the two-way race, two race between Trump and Harris, they have Trump up 2.7 percentage points. In the full field, which includes the third parties like Jill Stein, Cornell West, they have Trump up three point four percentage points looking at independence they have trump up nine and listen to this looking at racial breakdowns among black voters they have harris at 67 and trump at 32 i would suggest to you this is why she's everywhere this is why she did Fox News. This is why she's going to do NBC. This is why she's going to do a CNN town hall. They're in a panic that she's going to lose this race. And the CNN town hall apparently was a, a complete disaster, as stated here. The seven worst moments of the night. Let's, uh, let's have a look here. Kamala is asked what her biggest weakness is, responds by saying she values having a smart team of people with different perspectives. Cooper asks a similar question and Kamala responds by saying she probably worked hard at making sure that I'm well versed on issues. Kamala doesn't know what to say after Cooper asks her why she hasn't already done any of her ideas as VP. Four. Kamala admits inflation is too high under her leadership. Kamala calls herself a nerd and says she can't answer questions sometimes because she needs to look up the answer. Kamala crumbles after Cooper asked her why she did nothing to secure the border for three years. Kamala tried making fun of Trump's border wall before Cooper fact-checked her on her own border wall policy. Yeah. Complete 
joke. Brand new Trump commercial aired all day today during NFL broadcast. This is nothing like a normal political ad. This is one of the best we've ever seen. This year aired on Sunday. If you watch football, boom, check it out. You already seen it. When I first came into office, I cut taxes more than any other president. We have created 7 million new jobs, and it led to a growth like we've never seen before. We developed the greatest economy in history by far. When I left office, it changed. Inflation destroyed the lives of so many people. Interest rates went from 2% to 10%. Millions of illegal immigrants, traffickers, and drugs coming into our country. Our country has gone to hell. So I made a decision to run. We're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. I will fight for you with every breath, and I will never let you down. President Trump is literally putting his life on the line, and he's willing to risk it all because he loves this country. He is strong, he is fearless, and he is what this country needs right now. Our cities will be safe, our streets will be clean, and our border will be secure. We can't allow our country to be destroyed by politicians who will put their own power ahead of the interests of the American people, our freedom, and our future. The left told me to hate Trump. When you cut through the lies, you realize the truth. American families were better when Donald Trump was president. We were safer, wealthier, and stronger. So if you love this country, if you want to stand up and fight for the future of our nation, you must re-elect Donald J. Trump. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. I don't know about you, but that gave me goosebumps. My heart's pounding. That's the first time I watched that. That was amazing. All right, unexpected link between menthol and Alzheimer's discovered in mice. All right, let's hit it. <clears throat> A recent study found something strange. When mice and Alzheimer's disease inhale menthol, their cognitive abilities improve. It seems the chemical compound can stop some of the damage done to the brains that's usually associated with the disease. In particular, researchers noticed a reduction in the interleukin-1 beta protein, which helps to regulate the body's inflammatory response, a response that can offer natural protection, but one that leads to harm when it's not controlled properly. The team behind the study, published in April 2023, says it shows the potential of particular smells to be used as therapies for Alzheimer's. Interesting. I mean, a lot of people use essential oils and say they do all kinds of stuff. Well, uh, all right, let's see what's going on with race and ethnicity with regards to uh, Alzheimer's. It's not clear if people from different ethnic groups in the UK have a higher chance of getting dementia. Some studies have found differences in certain locations, but it's hard to know if they reflect the situation in the UK population as a whole. A few studies have suggested that people from black African, black Caribbean, and South Asian ethnic groups are more likely to get dementia than people from white ethnic groups. Interesting. Okay. Whatever. And I remember hearing this when I was a kid. I don't know what's going on. Why is there a stereotype about African Americans and menthol cigarettes? I legitimately wondered why. Even on that old mad TV skit, there's my white mama. Artie Lang would always talk about wanting menthols. I would love to hear input from African Americans as to whether this is legitimate or just a ridiculous stereotype thing. All right, what do we got here? <clears throat> Whatever to that, that's not real. I'm not black, but it's a pretty well-established fact that cigarette companies heavily advertised menthols to African Americans in the 60s and 70s and beyond, which made it that a very large percentage of those cigarettes even today are purchased by them. I am an African American, and this is quite correct. I used to smoke cigarettes, and uh, my black friends that were smokers were shocked that I did not smoke Cools or Newports. The assumption was, well, that if I was black, I either smoked that or those black and mild cigars. Captain Blacks? I agree that it was quite generational. I was born in the 70s, and people in my family smoked that cheap menthol S. So, like many things, bad habits get carried down just like good ones. Yeah, right, so whatever. This is weird. Interesting facts going on. I don't know. Thousands of cleaning supplies may contain substances linked to health problems. 
When you go through the chore of cleaning your home, you hope the end result is a safer, healthier environment for you and your loved ones. But some of the products you are using might put your health at risk. Mm. Chemicals, yeah, absolutely. Talk about smells, like chemical smells, not good. Absolutely awful. Chemical smells make you sick. You know, you sit around smelling bleach all day. It's not going to be good for you. The EWG has found more than 2,000 cleaning supplies may contain substances linked to health problems, including asthma, chemical burns, and cancer risks. It can be hard to tell exactly what is safe and what is not when shopping at the store. This is especially true with the prevalence of greenwashing, where companies utilize tactics in their product labeling or marketing to appear more natural and environmentally safe, said Jenny Romer, the Deputy Assistant Administrator for Pollution Prevention at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. People are becoming more aware of how these things can have an effect on our health. In the United States, there's really poor transparency. Yeah, no doubt about it. Australia's top neurologists call for chemical regulator to ban Paraquat herbicide over links with Parkinson's. We talked about Chloromaquat before. It's in a whole bunch of oat products causing all kinds of... Uh, digestive issues, colon cancers. Well, dozens of preeminent neurologists in Australia are calling on the chemical regulator to ban Paraquat. So anything ending in quat sounds like it's a poison. A controversial herbicide that has been linked to the development of Parkinson's disease. Yeah, who would have guessed chemicals, unnatural things that are synthesized in a laboratory and put in our body or injected are not good for us? Hmm. I mean... Come on, people. It's a very highly informed group of people who agree that medical evidence is now very strong, so that's really, really significant. Will they capitulate and say, yeah, we've made a mistake? Or will they stand tall and say, shh, just like they did with fluoride forever, but now it's like, you know, it's clear, it's bad. Nova Scotia woman was asked if she knew about assisted dying before a mastectomy surgery for breast cancer. Canada. Woo. I mean, what? The Nova Scotia woman was stealing herself for a major surgery, a mastectomy for breast cancer, when an unfamiliar doctor ran through series of preoperative questions. What was her medical history? What medications does she regularly take? Any allergies? Was she aware of medical assisted in dying? 15 months later, before a second mastectomy, it happened again. The woman said, different color, same inquiry, in the list of questions about your life and your past, and how you are treating these things. Hey, made is a thing that exists, she said. It was upsetting, not because I thought they were trying to kill me. I was shocked that it happens. I was like, again? This happened again? Yeah, so the College of Physicians and Surgeons in whatever province, the regulatory body, the ones that pushed the uh, inoculation for the virus, before and said like the only way you're not allowed to take this the only way you're not allowed to take this is if you've taken it once and had a reaction or you've taken something of the ingredients and had a reaction that was the only way you're allowed to get around it and that was the college of physicians and surgeons protocol and uh it's same with this they're like you must ask this question why I'm a very lucky woman to have a large supportive family i have all the love but I felt small and lonely and alone in that hallway before going into surgery. Yeah, and imagine she didn't have any parents or brothers or sisters or family who would support her. She probably would have gone through with it. Ontario man granted euthanasia for controversial post-C19 vaccination syndrome. What, what is that? All right. An Ontario man in his late 40s with a history of mental illness died by euthanasia after his assisted death assessors decided that the most reasonable explanation for his physical decline was a post-C19 vaccination syndrome, in quotations. The term is controversial. Canada's current vaccine reporting system for adverse events doesn't include post-vaccine syndrome, and multiple specialists consulted before his death couldn't agree on a diagnosis, raising questions as to whether the man's condition met the criteria for irremediable meaning a hopeless incurable condition and Quebec had to go to court because they were just offing people like crazy they had to like have a meeting and be like okay just to reiterate if they're not dying like they can't be like remediated then don't kill them and the doctors were like mm. oops the anonymized case is one of the several highlighted in a series of reports issued by a 16-member May Death Review Committee 
struck by Ontario's chief coroner's office in January. Identified as Mr. A, the man experienced suffering and functional decline following three vaccinations for SARS-CoV-2. He also suffered from depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and personal disorders. And while navigating his physical symptoms, was twice admitted to hospital, once involuntarily with thoughts of suicide. Amongst his multiple specialists, no unifying diagnosis was confirmed. However, his maid assessors opined that the most reasonable diagnosis for Mr. A's clinical presentation, severe functional decline, was a post-vaccine syndrome, in keeping with chronic fatigue syndrome. Just make it up. We got nothing else. Couldn't be anything else. It's a syndrome that he developed mentally after receiving his inoculation three times. Okay, so he wanted to die. Halifax police confirmed body of Walmart employee was found in walk-in oven. All right, police have confirmed the body of an employee who died at a Walmart in Halifax over the weekend was found in a walk-in oven. I did, look, most people don't even know what that is. What is walk-in oven? Well, uh, if you have a large bakery and you ever see them pull out like these big giant trays, like it's like a stack of trays, like you slide a little smaller tray of dough in there and then they wheel in this thing. It's definitely walk-in. A human could fit in there. Not with the other stuff I wouldn't expect. All right. So the investigation is complex, involves several partner agencies. An investigation of this nature may take a significant amount of time. Fair enough. Looking at different potential medical causes, looking at the technology, the infrastructure around access to that location, and the mechanism involved, having them examined. Okay. So what's going on? We urge the public to be mindful, sharing speculative information on social media. Don't, don't, don't talk about it. The woman identity has not been released but the maritime Sikh society confirmed to ctv news she was a member of their community who had moved to nova scotia two three years ago rest in peace this is definitely sketchy 19 year old bakery worker shows what walk-in oven looks like after walmart incident all right great let's have a look the investigation is complex involves several partners blah 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 can you open a walk-in oven from the inside great question the worker shows that the large oven door doesn't shut on its own and has an emergency release button inside in case someone is trapped in the appliance. Why didn't the emergency button work? Maybe it did. Maybe the person was not conscious. If the button didn't work, someone put a lock on a door handle. Seems suspicious. Literally, we have to push ours hard to close. Oh, we have to push ours hard to close it, and I've never walked in to clean it. Exactly. There's safety features on the oven. She got locked in by someone, allegedly, they believe. Here's the video, but it's not popping off, so apologies about that. All right. Well, anyway, we'll keep you posted on that. Edmonton, another Canadian story. What's going on? Police have uncovered one of the most elaborate encampments they've ever encountered, featuring a makeshift power grid with solar panels and various household appliances. Discovered last week by a joint team from the city of Edmonton and Edmonton Police Service, the encampment was expertly camouflaged and included four multi-level structures enclosed by a fence made of trees and branches. Built without nails or structural support, the structures were at risk of collapse. Inside, police and park rangers found active fire stoves, a stone fireplace, stone and marble flooring, a working refrigerator and washing machine, and exposed live electrical wire. Power was supplied by four generators, while solar panels powered a chop shop for stolen bikes. In the raid, police recovered 15 weapons, including three guns, and approximately $8,000 in stolen goods, returning items like backpack blowers and mountain bike to their owners. Authorities issued 20 violation tickets and executed 10 warrants. The encampment caused extensive environmental damage, that's really important, of course, impacting tree root systems and a nearby creek, well, that sucks, which had been dammed to supply running water. After dismantling the encampment, police offered support services to its occupants, which they declined. Yeah, they were like, no thanks, just don't put us in jail. And they're probably out on bail. Not impressed? That would be a lie. Uh, I would say incredibly unique. Uh, in my experience with the encampment team so far, I haven't seen anything uh, this extensive, this elaborate. We're just off Fulton Creek uh, in the 34th Street area, just off of a local dog park. We're responding to uh, an illegal encampment that's been uh, set up. They've got solar solar panels. We've recovered uh, four generators, two of which were buried underground to power everything. Uh, there is a creek, uh, like I mentioned, and they have a generator stuck into the ground there to pump water to the, the site for a running sink and a laundry machine as well. So this is the more extensive of the two sites here, if you want to follow me. It's a little bit tight. 
we had a, a fireplace, obviously chimney up front, out, out the top there, operational sink, operational laundry machine, bridge, yep, green, coffee maker, and then if you wanted to capture the floor, this was all natural earth, uh, but they brought in stone, stone tiles. The flooring is not something I had seen before at one of these uh, encampments. It was all installed, almost marble flooring. This is all connected to their solar panel. All right, whatever. Like, that's absolutely insane. Elaborate. Ingenuity is off the charts. So that's what's going on. Well, Boeing. What the heck? Boeing made satellite breaks up into pieces in space after anomaly. Okay, well, the Starliner went up there, had a bunch of problems getting off the ground, a bunch of problems connecting. They decided they weren't going to bring the astronauts home in that thing. They're still up there. It's supposed to be a week long, and now it's like nine months. All right, well, they uh, apparently Boeing makes satellites too. So what happened? It broke, broke up in orbit after experiencing an anomaly that resulted in its total loss. Operators reported Monday. The service provider, Intelsat, said the satellite disintegrated on Saturday and caused communications of power outages for customers in Europe, Africa, and parts of Asia-Pacific region. There's more garbage going to be floating around up there. All right, well, they have no idea what happened. They issued an alert basically saying, hey, listen, some satellites might get damaged up there. Uh, early in 2024, the Federal Aviation Administration discovered several potential faults on commercial Boeing planes and ordered more safety measures to be in place. The investigation came after Boeing made international headlines when a door plug blew off a 737 MAX 9 plane while it was in flight. Yeah, so they're totally embattled. There's a strike going on. They've rejected all terms. They've just fired like 17,000 employees. And guess what? They're going to go ahead and sell their space business. I, I won't be surprised if they literally collapse. The new CEO explores options for Starliner and NASA space station in quest of to rescue the manufacturer. Yeah, there's no rescuing him, and I doubt a bailout is coming. Nevada school to Knicks volleyball match versus San Jose. Nevada became the latest team to call off a women's volleyball match against San Jose State, citing not enough players. Oh, well. The Wolfpack were originally scheduled to host San Jose State this weekend, but Nevada players announced they would refuse to take the court, saying they refuse to participate in any match that advances injustice against female athletes. Very good. Beautiful. Without providing further details, Nevada's athletic department had said the program wouldn't back out from the match, referencing state equality laws, but also said that no players will be disciplined if they do not participate. So like, you know, liability, let's cover all bases, CYA. The game was switched to San Jose in the interest of both programs. The teams had said in a joint statement with no further explanation before Nevada elected to forfeit. So far this season, Southern Utah, Boise State, Wyoming, Utah State, and now Nevada have canceled games against the Spartans. Given that Boise State, Wyoming, Utah, and Nevada are members of the Mountain West Conference, those contests are considered forfeits and count as valuable wins in the league standings for San Jose State. So watch them get into the finals, and we'll see. Whatever. Glad for standing up. Over 275 female golfers send a letter to LPGA expressing concerns over trans golfers competing against women. Yeah, great. Wonderful. A total of 194 players will be competing in this week's LPGA qualifying series in hopes of punching their ticket in December's final stage of qualifying school, Q School, to earn an opportunity to earn, well, come on, who wrote this? An LPGA card. Among the nearly 200-person field is transgender golfer Haley Davidson, whose inclusion may align with LPGA's current gender policy, but not with the vast majority of fellow competitors. Davidson advanced through the pre-qualifying stage of Q School in August after finishing in a tie for 42nd and was allowed to do so despite more than 275 female players voicing their concerns over a biological male competing in women's golf. Yeah. And there is the individual. Just thick. Whatever. So anyway, no one's happy about it. What will they do? There's no world where I ever thought this would be the case, Miller told Dak Kitch. I've been talking to my parents about it, and they can't believe they have a daughter who's having to go through this. It's truly shocking to realize kind of where we are today and that this is the state of the world. That's what happens when you let the liberals take over. Conservatives, you know, turn the other cheek, it's all okay. Yeah, but stand up, have a backbone. Die on your feet is better than living on your knees. 2017, nine-year-old Avery Jackson became the poster child for trans kids after being featured on the cover of National Geographic. Now age 17, let's check in on Avery and his affirming family. Let's see if kids know who they are. All right. 
Creepy. The best thing about being a girl is now I don't have to pretend to be a boy. Yeah. Totally. Just like I pretend to be a tiger. No, I am. I am. This is me. It's not a mask. It's real. Before his viral appearance on National Geographic at age 9, here's a video of little Avery at age 7. Avery was a normal kid. He discussed enjoying climbing, playing with his brother, and wanting to be a ninja. Then the child's shocking revelation. Oh, and I'm transgender. Okay, sure. Seven-year-old Avery discusses being born a boy and having boy body parts, but knowing that he was a girl inside. When young kids claim that they are really members of the opposite sex, it begs the question, what level of understanding do kids have about their gender? And what have they been infiltrated by? What kind of demon? Because that's what he's feeling inside. It's a demon. It's demonic. The seven-year-old transgender child showed self-awareness when he says, sometimes I like to play as an animal, a ninja or a princess, but it doesn't mean my parents should treat me that way because it's just make-believe. Inside of listening, his parents affirmed. Yeah. Following Avery's cover story in National Geographic 2016, he appears alongside his family and three others, transgender children in HBO's Transhood documentary. Avery and the others featured trans kids were tracked for five years. The footage left viewers shocked. Haven't seen it. Might tune in. Interesting. In the shocking clip for Transhood, Avery expresses no longer wanting to continue his public life trans activism and his book tour saying that it ruined his life. To this, his trans activist mom, Debbie, responds with shock that her child changed his mind. We're going to Washington, D.C. And we actually go and meet with our senators and representatives. After we do that, we go and sit and sell some of Avery's books for a little while. I just don't want to even have a book. I've done too much in this world. It's ruined my life enough. And now everyone in this world is going to know. And it's just gonna... So that's the important part, is like the kid knows that all this publicity, she doesn't like it. He, whatever, the individual, whatever, I don't know. But the mom, Debbie, the worst mom of all kind. Wow, the U.S. government funded a $9.7 million study where they gave puberty blockers to kids in an effort to prove that it was healthy for kids to be transitioned. The study proved that it wasn't good for the kids, though. Now they refuse to release the study because the lead doctor is afraid that it will be used to ban sex changes for kids. These people are evil. Absolutely. U.S. study on puberty blockers goes unpublished because politics doctors say. And there is the doctor who is terrified of everything. Dr. Joanna or Joanna Olson Kennedy. Dr. Olson Kennedy is one of the country's most vocal advocates of adolescent gender treatments and has served as an expert witness. Yeah, well, guess what? She has an agenda and she doesn't want anything else to happen other than what she wants. It's like if someone loves ice cream and they do a study and it finds out that ice cream causes cancer. The dude it might say nothing because he wants ice cream to remain legal or whatever anyway boom there it is so we'll see tomorrow we might be back we'll tear the mask off maybe we'll see if not definitely in november i'm trying my best here i got a bunch of work to do and i'm a dad so we'll see sigma tiger signing out